puri ng Panginoon. Once again, sa umagang ito, um, we want to center ourselves uh, to the presence of God, to the Lord Himself, who is here with us. So, um, let's just, you know, calm our whole being before the Lord and let's uh, receive His grace sa atin, no? Uh, we want to draw near to the Lord. And the Lord said, uh, sinabi niya na if we draw near to God, no, He will also draw near to us. So, let's claim that promise. Purihin ang Panginoon. Let's think about the name of Jesus. At tayo po ay mag-breathe in and mag-breathe out. Thinking about the name of Jesus. And then saying it with our lips. Jesus, have mercy on us. Purihin ang Panginoon. Evangelism po is our task as the people of God while we are in this world. Yan po ang pinagagawa sa atin ng ating Panginoon. Go and make disciples of all nations. Yan ang tagubili niya sa kanyang mga alagad at ganun din sa atin. Pero ano ba ang ibig sabihin ng evangelism? What does it mean? Some people are confused about this word, even in the church. Meron mga tao who think that evangelism is all about, you know, helping the poor, uh, doing things to help them sa kanilang kalagayan, which is good. There's nothing wrong with that. It's very important. Dapat ginagawa yan ng mga Kristiyano. But that is not what evangelism means. I'm sorry, hindi po yan ang ibig sabihin ng evangelist. Minsan, nakikita ko yan sa mga ilang organizations, may nakalagay, kunyari, evangelistic outreach, pero what they mean by that is that they would just give mga donations and food packets. And Of course, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that yung tawag nila, evangelism, is misleading because that's not the meaning of evangelism. Of course, for most people, lalo na sa born-again churches, ang evangelism has to do with uh, inviting people to church. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Dapat naman tayo mag-invite sa church o kaya sa small group o fellowship. We should do that, no? And it's all part of evangelism, pero that's not yet really what evangelism is. Siguro matatawag natin yun na pre-evangelism. Or just being a good person sa ibang mga tao. Or letting them know na we're Christians. O kaya, you know, giving people a booklet. Or maybe, you know, for some, talagang, you know, yung mabilisan ng presentation, mga few minutes na tayo lang yung nagsasalita and the other person is not able to really interact with us. Or in some cases, minsan, nakikipag-debate tayo. All of those things are, you know, may part yan. Pero, we're missing the whole point. Kung ano nga ba talaga ang evangelism. We need to understand what evangelism means. And that's our topic today. And we want to look at uh, yung prophecy or or worship ni Zechariah after his mouth was open, no, finally. Kasi when the, when the angel Gabriel told him na you will have a son, di siya makapaniwala. Pero finally, uh, you know, a son is born and everybody's rejoicing and he himself, you know, nag-indicate siya and then when the neighbors were all asking him kung itatawag doon sa anak nila. At sabi niya, he will be called John. And because of that, his mouth was open, his, long, his tongue was loosed, sabi sa Bible, and he was able to praise God. And so as we look at that particular, uh, you know, uh, portion of the story, yung kanyang uh, 
papuri sa Panginoon. Of course, what we see here is hindi lang talaga yung kanyang pasasalamat o gratitude, but here in this in this uh, poetry, no? Luke 1, 67 hanggang 80. Uh, we find dito uh, yung talagang magiging ministry ni John the Baptist and uh, si Zechariah parang gives us a overview of uh, what John, his son, no, which later will be called the Baptist, no, kasi he would be baptizing people. Um, what would be his role sa uh, redemption, uh, redemptive history? So we want to read that and then meditate on that. So samahan nyo ako. Let's begin with uh, uh, verse 67. Sabi nga nito, His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because He has come and has redeemed His people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David, as He said through His holy prophets of long ago, Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our fathers and to remember His holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, no, uh, will be called a prophet of the Most High for you will be, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give His people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the, de- in the desert until he appeared publicly to Israel. This is the word of the Lord. At, uh, let's be open to the Holy Spirit as He impresses upon us in our hearts a word or a phrase or an idea uh, in which He wants to reveal Himself more and more sa atin. So let's be open to that. And mamaya we can post it or anytime you like. Post the, the word or phrase or idea that um, parang was impressed upon you by the Holy Spirit. And tell us what the Lord is saying to you. So for now, let us pray and let's ask God to speak to us. Heavenly Father, maraming salamat sa iyo na... Because of your goodness and mercy, we are here together in this place of grace to meditate upon the Word of God and to receive your message for us through the power of the Holy Spirit and into our hearts, Panginoon, which will enable us to grow and to become faithful and fruitful as your children. Salamat po, Panginoon. We give you praise, O Lord God. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. So, the title of our devotional today is What Evangelism Means. And we are meditating on Luke 1, verses 67 and 80. And so we want to really understand it all. What, what is the meaning of evangelism? Because this so this is so central sa ating buhay bilang mga mananampalataya. This is what we must be doing. This is what we should be engaged in. Uh, this is what the church should uh, really prioritize. And so therefore, it's important for us to know, are we doing it? Is it really happening? Uh, so we don't want to be misled by our own misunderstanding, ika nga. Uh, we don't want to congratulate ourselves na we are doing evangelism or we have done evangelism uh, when in fact it's really not yet done, you know, in the real sense of the word. 
So now uh, this morning we can be open uh, minded and ready to let the Lord renew our hearts and minds. Kasi uh, kailangan magtulong-tulong tayo sa ganitong bagay. Not just in ROCC but even in other churches. We all need to sit down you know, every now and then and ask ourselves are we evangelizing? Are we doing the work of evangelism? Personally, sa bawat isa sa inyo, uh, as individuals, you should ask yourself, uh, am I involved? Am I participating in evangelism? And it's not a question of style. Hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na, well, hindi ko style yan, o hindi ko gift yan, because it's, it's, a, it's a responsibility. Parang katulad ng mga magulang na nagpapakain ng mga anak o inasikaso yung bahay o nagtatrabaho, we don't say na, well, di ko style yan, you know? These are things that we should be doing and ought to be doing by the grace of God. So, from this uh, interesting, uh, ano, poetic uh, ano, uh, segment ng Gospel of uh, Luke, I believe we can find or we can identify two, two of the essential tasks of evangelism. In other words, if these two things uh, are going to happen or if they are happening, then we can safely say, yes, evangelism is going on in my life or in the church where I belong and we're doing it. No? So, ano yung dalawang essential task na yan? Uh, We must remember that si John the Baptist is not just kumbaga, John the Baptist. He represents all of us. He represents those of us na who would like to really fulfill yung layunin ng Panginoon. Of course, specific yung kay John the Baptist, unique yung ministry niya because he is John the Baptist, uh, and we cannot uh, duplicate yung kanyang ginawa. No? The Lord has a specific calling sa kanya in ministry, and he was able to fulfill it no? until the time came for him to go up to heaven. Pero, uh, you know, the, the example that he has set is, of course, the same thing na maari natin kunin as inspiration sa buhay natin and in the church today. And so, I've identified the lawang task based dun sa prophecy ni Zechariah uh, tungkol sa kanyang anak na si John the Baptist. And first of all, it has to do, as I've seen dito sa passage na to, the task of uh, proclaiming, no? To proclaim Jesus as the only means of salvation. Interestingly, itong uh, poetic uh, ano na to, uh, segment na to, is, is really emphasizing Jesus more than John the Baptist. Uh, although from uh, verse uh, 76 onwards, he focuses on his son John, sa prophecy niya. Pero still, Zechariah is thinking about Jesus all the way. So, to proclaim Jesus as the only means of salvation is what John the Baptist would be doing when he begins his ministry. So, basahin natin to, beginning in verse 67 hanggang 75. Sabi ganito, uh, his father, you know, si Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit you know, and prophesied. So, what he, what he is about to say is not something that originated sa kanya. He is being inspired by the Lord Himself through the Holy Spirit to speak these words. That's why I believe na hindi lang ito para ka Zechariah. But for all of us who are followers of the Lord, God is also speaking to us. Sabi nga nito, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel. Because he has come and has redeemed his people. So this is uh, an interesting thing, no? Kasi hindi pa nangyayari yung mga dapat mangyari. O si John the Baptist pa lang yung pinanganak. Actually, si John ang pinanganak. Si Jesus will be born three months later. And their ministries will start actually much later. And yet, uh, you know, sabi sa prophecy ni Zechariah, because he has come and has redeemed his people. So it's past tense. It is as if parang tapos na. But that, that is because what Jesus no, and John are going to do 
will be considered good as done, ika nga, because it is the will of the Lord. Mangyayari at mangyayari yun. And in verse 69, He has raised up a horn of salvation, sabi ni Zechariah. Now, the horn is a symbol of strength, no? Or power. Kasi related yan dun sa oxen, you know, or ox, na may horn. So, yun yung metaphor for strength. He has raised, raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So, based on narrative ni Luke, no, this is referring to Jesus. He is the horn of salvation. Now, in the horns of salvation, but horn, singular. And so, Zechariah, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is declaring through his prophecy and his uh, worship na si Jesus is the one promised no, by God. Sabi nga sa verse 70, as he had said, as he said through his prophets uh, of long ago. So, Jesus is the fulfillment of what has been promised in the Old Testament. The Messiah would come and indeed he has come. You know, even though hindi pa siya pinapanganak because, but because of the certainty of God's promise, Zechariah speaks in the past tense. And then sabi niya sa verse 71, you know, quoting uh, yung mga Old Testament scriptures that talk about the coming Messiah. Sabi niya, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Now, yung words na yun, of course, are coming from a pious Jew or who is expecting deliverance from God, from Yahweh. But as it would unfold in the story of Luke, yung gospel niya, as well as in other gospels, we would discover na yung enemies na yun are not parang, you know, flesh and blood enemies, mga tao, like the Romans. One of those things that would be parang corrected in the ministry of Jesus is that Ang concern is not so much yung mga kalaban na Roman Empire and, and all of that, but really the spiritual powers and authorities that are preventing people from coming to the knowledge of God. Sabi sa verse 72, To show mercy to our fathers and to remember His holy covenant. So the coming of Jesus is in accordance with the promises of God. And particularly yung promise niya, Kay Abraham, as it is written so verse 73 the oath he swore to our father Abraham God said to Abraham I will bless you and you will be a blessing to many nations you will be a father to many nations that's why see Paul in the gospel of uh, sorry in the book of Romans talagang made such a big deal out of this to emphasize na yung gospel or good news is all about the promise of God to Abraham and it's uh, greater than Moses because the promise to Abraham is for everyone, hindi lang for Israel. So, sabi ni Zechariah to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear. Again, this is parang echoing the words of the Old Testament. Kusa Jesus would come and redeem people and save them so that they can fulfill their purpose. And serve God, you know, without fear. They will be set free. Ito yung transformative plan ni Lord for, for the people that He would be calling, you know, through the gospel. He will not just parang forgive them and elevate them as children of God, but He would transform them through the power of the Holy Spirit so that they can represent Him in the world. So this is parang a glimpse or a preview of the ministry of Jesus, uh, how he would save people. And then finally, in verse 75, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. So in other words, you know, see John would be doing one specific thing, and that is to proclaim Jesus as the only means of salvation. In the same way, ang evangelism po, bagamat mahalaga yung pagtulong sa mga mahihirap, o pagtulong sa mga bata, for example, paggawa ng mga mabubuting bagay, pag-invite sa church, pagbibigay ng mga booklet, o kaya yung simple presence lang natin sa trabaho, being good Christians and all of that. All of that, lahat mga bagay na yan have their place. 
Pero ang tunay na evangelism is uh, really proclaiming Jesus as the only means of salvation. You know, helping people to know this truth. Now, in the world that we live in, hindi popular yung idea na there is only one truth, you know, or one way to God, and that is through Jesus. And so when we speak about such things in the world today, sempre makikriticize tayo as being narrow-minded. But this is the work of evangelism. We are to proclaim Jesus as the only means of salvation, and we have to explain that, and why and so forth and so yun yung apologetics because people do not believe in Jesus they believe that well people believe in Jesus in a way pero he's only one of the many so yung tinatawag na pluralism or universalism marami namang paraan to go to God or to worship God so people today do not believe that there is one way they do not believe that only Jesus is the way and so tayo in the church today, those of us who are followers of Christ, yan yung challenging task natin uh, to convince people that Jesus is the only way, that He is the horn of salvation, that He alone is going to rescue us and deliver us from our sins. At wala nang ibang paraan. So this kind of task is what evangelism is all about. Kaya nga, for me, apologetics is not a second thing or an, a parang an extra thing. It's really part of evangelism. It's proclaiming that Jesus is the only means of salvation. So mga kapatid, this is what we must be doing. And this is what we must be supporting. Any ministry kung saan dinedeclare at pinoproclaim that Jesus is the only way, we should be there to support, to pray, to come alongside, because that is our task. And until and unless, uh, you know, that is being done, that Jesus is being proclaimed, uh, hindi talaga evangelism yung ginagawa natin, even though it might be good. Uh, you know, I, I remember one time I was talking to a person who was really doing, a, you know, a lot of good things in a certain area. And, uh, <clears throat> Tumutulong siya sa mga tagaroon at um, nagbibigay siya ng mga abuloy and all of that. And I said, you know, this is very good. You know, this honors the Lord. Kaya lang, have you told people about Jesus? O sabi niya, you know, I don't want to be so, ano kasi, I don't want to be so, alam mo yun, parang so obvious, sabi niya ganyan. Ayo, ayo kung ano eh, parang baka ma-offend yung mga tao eh. Sabi ko, well, I respect that. It's just that hindi pa evangelism yan. Ang tunay na evangelism is taking a stand that Jesus indeed is the only way to be saved. So, kung saan mo pang so anong man ginagawa yan, o ano man yung ginagawa mo on the side, you have to do that as essentially what evangelism is. So, kung ikaw ay nasa Facebook, you know, uh, you're, you're not just telling people na, you know, be good, be kind, etc., love others. You have to tell people that Jesus is the only way to be saved. Usama ang platform yan, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Discord, or whatever, o kaya pu publicly, sa workplace, sa trabaho. We, we have to do that. Of course, we do it with respect, you know? We don't do it in a way na that is uh, parang abusive, you know, sa mga tao. We have to do it respectfully and kindly. Pero we have to do it. Now, the second thing is, we have to guide people on how to follow Jesus. Again, that's the work of evangelism. And well, of course, some people would call that discipleship. But that's a, parang a modern terminology na, you know, we have come up with para distinguish natin yung evangelism sa discipleship. Pero evangelism is the whole thing. Make disciples of all nations is the whole thing. And so to guide people on how to follow Jesus is what evangelism actually means. So let's look at verse 76 to 80. Sabi nga niya na, And you, my child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for Him. So John the Baptist has this unique role of uh, really preparing the way for the Lord. In other words, to help people be in a place of uh, a posture of uh, faith and, and willingness to believe in the Lord Jesus. 
So yun ang trabaho niya, to prepare people. And then sabi, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. So John the Baptist would have to explain and help people understand, you know, uh, that they need to believe in Jesus and follow Him. In fact, yun ang magiging, magiging ministry ni John the Baptist. Sabi niya, nung sumusunod na yung mga tao kay Jesus, sabi niya, you know, He has to be greater and I have to be lesser. Because that's the whole point of evangelism. For people to know that Jesus is the only way and for people to make a decision to follow Him as disciples of Christ and to trust Him for each and every day of their lives. Uh, you know, to, to give people the knowledge of salvation. Sabi niya sa verse 78, Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven. Now, yun ang terminology na ginamit ni Zechariah to refer to Jesus. He is the rising sun or, you know, actually more literally the morning sun. Okay? Who come to us from heaven, sabi niya. Uh, to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. Now, very important yun. The way Zechariah puts it, No? To guide our feet into the path of peace. In other words, the work of, it, of John the Baptist is not just simply to convince people to make a transaction with God. Okay, magpa-baptize kayo and then you can just go on your way. Ang magiging task ni John the Baptist is to help people to not just believe in Jesus, but to follow Him into that path of peace. The path of salvation. In other words, they are to walk and live their lives trusting in Jesus. Now, like I said, unique yung role ni John the Baptist. Pero we can see that as a, our guide and inspiration and example sa buhay natin ngayon. How, what do we mean by evangelism? It is not just simply to tell people that Jesus is the only way. We have to, we have to guide people and help people how to follow Jesus. You know, in other words, kung ang mga tao ay parang naikinig lang or they just profess with their lips that they believe in Jesus pero they're not really following Him on a day-to-day -day basis, evangelism is really not happening yet. Okay? Kaya nga in the church, we do not simply congratulate ourselves kasi may umatin na tao sa worship service o may, dum o may sumali sa small group. Evangelism is not yet done, simply nagpunta sila doon, no? The evangelism is all about helping that person to understand what it means to follow the Lord Jesus on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's a that's a process. At kailangan nun ay guidance. Like I said, people call it discipleship. And it's alright, no? Pero we have to understand that's still part of evangelism. Evangelism, you know, evangelion in Greek, really it's all about proclaiming the good news and helping people to believe in it and align their lives according to it. That's the true biblical meaning of evangelism. And so, makikita natin in a nutshell that our role in evangelism is to help people know and follow Jesus. Yan ang evangelism, mga kapatid. Sa Tagalog, ang tungkulin natin sa Ebanghelismo ay tulungan ng mga tao na makilala at sumunod kay Kristo. Evangelism is not happening ng wala yan. And of course, that is a process. Kaya nga sa verse 80, sabi nga nito, And the child grew and became strong in spirit, and he lived in the desert until he appeared publicly to Israel. So John the Baptist had to be prepared for that. It's an important task. So in the same way, brothers and sisters, tayo po, yan din ang dahilan bakit tayo nag-daily devotions, ba tayo nag-seminar, nagba-Bible study sa mga small group, hindi as an end in themselves, but to prepare us for the work of evangelism so that we can help people to know Jesus and to guide them in following Jesus. Again, let me say this, mga brothers and sisters na nakikinig. Evangelism has yet to happen or is not really happening until these two things 
have been accomplished sa buhay ng bawat isa. People are convinced that Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved and so therefore they are now following Him, trusting in Him each and every day of their lives. If those two things are not happening, evangelism is not happening. So in every church, we need to sit down and ask ourselves, Ang mga tao ba ay kumbinsido that Jesus is the only way? If not, what should we be doing? Pangalawa, are they following Jesus in their daily lives? Are they honoring Him as Lord sa business nila, sa family nila, sa vocation nila, sa love life nila, sa entertainment nila, whatever area? Are they following the Lord Jesus bilang kanyang mga disciples? If not, why not? So these are the two important questions that we ask ourselves. And in the same way, personally, bawat isa sa atin, we should ask ourselves, am I participating in this? Am I fulfilling my part in the church to help out sa gawain na ito? Lord, have mercy upon us. Minsan, as Christians, we just want to attend, listen to sermons, but we do not understand. Ang mga sermons, ang mga Bible studies, ang mga devotionals tulad na ito are only a means to an end. To equip us for the work of evangelism. And if we are not doing evangelism, you know, then we are missing the whole point. Now, of course, may kailangan time. Some of you may be still young in the Lord. Kailangan ng time. It's okay. But we have to understand that goal. And even though hindi tayo, let's say, personally parang nag-evangelize na in, in, in the way that some people are doing it, pero we must be participating, supporting, praying, doing what we can so that it would be done. This is the grace of God sa atin. And let us pray. Lord, tulungan niyo po kami na yung passion namin sa buhay would be the Great Commission. Help us all, Lord God, na in everything that we do and say, that we are actually either actively doing this or participating in, in any ministry kung saan ito ay ginagawa. I do pray for everyone na nakikinig ngayon that we would not just see ourselves as spectators. That we would play an active role. Depende sa gifts namin, depende sa mga kakayanan namin. But I pray that each one of us, O Lord, would not just stand by sa tabi and watch others do it. May we also become part of the whole thing. Doing our best. Salamat po, Panginoon, for waking us up to this reality. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thanks be to God.